Shalom, my friends. Welcome to this week's newscast. Sixteen days ago, on April 19th, Freddie Gray, a 25-year-old African-American man who was a resident of the U.S. city of Baltimore, Maryland, died in police custody a week after being arrested. Apparently, in good health at the time of his arrest one week prior, Gray fell into a coma while in transport as the result of injuries to his neck and spine, sustained while being transported in a police vehicle. Now, four days ago, on May 1st, Gray's death was ruled to be a homicide as a result of rough riding and legal charges were issued against the six officers involved in the incident including that of second-degree murder. Peaceful protests were organized after Gray's death became public knowledge, and apparently spontaneous protests started after the funeral service, although several eventually included violent elements. Civil unrest continued, and as of last Tuesday, April 28th, at least 20 police officers were injured. At least 250 people were arrested. Thousands of police and Maryland Army National Guard troops were deployed and a state of emergency was declared in the city limits of Baltimore. After the riots, many small business owners struggled to clean up over 200 small businesses were unable to reopen by Wednesday, April 29th, and after Sunday, May 3rd, the National Guard was withdrawing from Baltimore and the night curfew on the city was lifted. But now, in the aftermath of this horrific event, Americans are bracing for a summer of racial disturbances around the country with African Americans and whites deeply divided about why the urban violence occurred. A resounding 96% of adults surveyed said it was likely there would be additional racial disturbances this summer, a signal that Americans believe Baltimore's recent problems are not a local phenomenon, but instead are symptomatic of broader national problems. The poll found that 53% of whites and 46% of African Americans said it was likely there would be a racial disturbance in metropolitan areas nearest them. It's hard to believe that after more than a half century since Martin Luther King Jr. delivered such a powerful statement in America, the face of racial prejudice hasn't changed very much at all. Turning to wars and rumors of wars, on Monday, April 27th, an Israeli man was injured after a firebomb was thrown at his car south of the West Bank city of Nablus, and Israeli security forces announced the arrest of a Palestinian terror cell that carried out five firebombing and pipe bomb attacks in the West Bank, which occurred earlier in the year. Then on Wednesday, April 29th, Hamas police in Gaza beat and arrested protesters after more than 400 demonstrators gathered in the Shijaya neighborhood to urge reconstruction and call for an end to intra-Palestinian divisions. Shortly after the rally began, Hamas security officers took over the podium, chanting slogans in support of their movement and denouncing PA President Mahmoud Abbas. When participants tried to move the rally to a different location, 
They were chased by club-wielding Hamas policemen. Then on Friday, May 1st, the failed attempt by four terrorists to plant explosive devices in the northern Golan Heights last Saturday, April 25th, revealed Hezbollah's efforts to recruit fighters from Druze villages in areas controlled by the Syrian army. The expansion of Hezbollah's military actions within the Druze community is presenting a new challenge to Israel. 300 Yazidi captives were killed in Iraq by ISIS terrorists west of Mosul. Iraqi Vice President Osama al-Nujafi described the reported deaths as horrific and barbaric. Defense Minister Moshe Ya'alon said that the Iranian appetite to export the revolution through terrorism will only get bigger, and with the seal of approval it receives as a legitimate state that is a touching distance away from being nuclear, the danger to the West and its allies in the Middle East will be enormous. One does not have to be an intelligence agency member to know that Iran is lying without blinking. For months, Iran tentatively agreed that it would send a large portion of its stockpile of uranium to Russia, where it would not be accessible for use in any future weapons program. However, Iranian officials, just this past Sunday on April 26th, said they are no longer willing to ship their atomic fuel out of the country under a proposed nuclear agreement, completely turning their backs on the agreement. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton told Mal Malcolm Honlin, Executive Vice Chairman of the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations, on Sunday, that she wanted to put the relationship between the United States and Israel back on constructive footing. Right. <laughs> I suppose that's why she and her husband Bill have been selling uranium to Russia and Iran. What an amazing state of affairs we're witnessing, my friends. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. It reads, Understand this, in the last days will come, set in perilous times, great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. For people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, and aroused by an inordinate greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant and contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffers of the truth, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy and profane, with absolutely no form of dedication to the Creator of all things, Abba, Father, Yahuwah. They will be without natural human affection, callous and inhuman, relentless, admitting of no truce or appeasement. They will be slanderers and false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate and loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce haters of good. They will be treacherous betrayers, rash, and inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of Elohim. For although they hold a form of holiness, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of Elohim. Their conduct belies the genuineness of their profession. Avoid all such people. Turn away from them. 
And that's the newscast for this week, my friends. I'll be willing I'll see you here again next week. Until then, stay safe. Because we matter